activation of telomerase uh, in mouse models of pulmonary fibrosis also had a therapeutic effect. So we know that pulmonary fibrosis, at least some types of pulmonary fibrosis, are originated by uh, presence of short telomeres. This is because there are familial cases of pulmonary fibrosis. There are individuals that are mutant for telomerase that are at a higher risk of pulmonary fibrosis. Pulmonary fibrosis increases with aging. The age can be synergizing with, uh, with factors like smoking, pollution, and uh, there are familiar cases that are associated with mutations in telomerase. So demonstrating that short telomeres can be at the origin of this disease. But also in sporadic cases, uh, individuals that develop pulmonary fibrosis have been also shown to have short telomeres. So we, we thought that you know, short telomeres must be synergizing with damage to the lung cells, uh, like smoking, pollution, radiation, and uh, they would be uh, really uh, injuring the, the, the regenerative cells in the lung. We know that the relevant cell type is the alveolar type two cells. We, have, we know this because we have generated telomeres dysfunction in many different cell types, and we know that are the alveolar type two cells the ones where if you uh, induce uh, telomere dysfunction, you can induce pulmonary fibrosis. And um, uh, if these cells, because they have short telomeres, cannot regenerate, you will have an immune uh, response, fibroblast recruitment, you will have a fibrosis. The treatments that we have right now, they are not able to cure the disease because the short telomeres remain there and they are impairing the ability of these cells to regenerate. So no matter if you treat um, the fibrosis because you still have the short telomeres, the patients progress and this disease is a lethal disease. So there, are, there is no treatment that can that can cure the fibrosis. Only the lung transplant is, uh, is, uh, is, um, is curative and this can only be done in 5% of the patients. So this is really a lethal disease. So we have um, during these years uh, shown that if we, we have generated mice that develop pulmonary fibrosis uh, due to short telomeres, uh, this has been, this is described in these papers. And we have shown that if we treat these mice with telomerase gene therapy, we are able to, to cure fibrosis. So you can see here the results. So mice that we treat with the, the placebo, with an empty vector, after they are diagnosed with fibrosis, they all progress to, to severe pulmonary fibrosis. You can see here the, the fibrosis in the lung. But the mice that were diagnosed with fibrosis that we have treated with the telomerase gene therapy, Half of them ha have no fibrosis, so they have been uh, cured. The fibrosis has been reverted. And the other half have only small patches of fibrosis. So telomerase gene therapy has a therapeutic effect in, in this model. It's a mouse model of pulmonary fibrosis associated to short telomeres. So we think this means that there is a, a, an opportunity to cure or to treat uh, efficiently humans with pulmonary fibrosis with a telomerase gene therapy strategy, because when we do this in mouse models of pulmonary fibrosis, we see that we can um, actually reverse all the, all the molecular and cellular um, uh, events that occur associated to pulmonary fibrosis and that we are able to really to, to, to stop the progression of pulmonary fibrosis in mouse models. One thing we were worried about is that maybe we cure fibrosis, but maybe we can induce cancer down the line, right? Uh, because telomerase, remember, um, is also needed by cancer cells to, in order to produce a tumor. So we try to test the, the safety of the telomerase gene therapy. Uh, we already knew that if we give mice the telomerase gene therapy and we wait until they, they die, there is no more cancer. Actually, cancer is delayed. But, uh, well, mice live much longer than humans, much, much shorter than humans, and we wanted to challenge mice uh, to develop cancer uh, to see whether uh, telomerase gene therapy could be uh, increasing the risk of cancer. And what we did was the following experiment. Either at the same time that we uh, put the telomerase gene therapy, we activated an oncogene in the lung. It's, it's called a KRAS oncogene. This the activation of this oncogene is going to lead to, to lung cancer in mice. And we wanted to see whether when we activate KRAS and we put telomerase, this was increasing cancer in mice. We also treated with telomerase before 
the induction of the oncogene. So in this case, we first put telomerase in the lung and then we induce the oncogene to see whether this could lead to more cancer. When we counted the mice with tumors, we saw that the telomerase gene therapy was not increasing the number of tumors, either in the pretreatment groups or in the simultaneous treatment groups. So there is, um, there is no impact on tumor growth in the number of mice with tumors, the tumors per mouse, or the size of the tumors when we put telomerase gene therapy before the activation of the oncogene or at the same time that we activate the oncogene. So this means that the telomerase uh, activation is not going to change the, 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 nat the natural history of, uh, of, uh, of cancer because we don't see a synergism between telomerase and the activation of the oncogene in the, in the, in the mouse cancer. So we think that this uh, supports the idea of developing a hum uh, telomerase gene therapy for humans with the idea of, um, of curing or delaying the progression of pulmonary fibrosis. And uh, in my group, we have generated a center where I work, which is the Spanish National Cancer Center, together with the um, University of Barcelona, we generated a new company, which is called Telomere Therapeutics, that we are developing the human vectors to activate telomerase in humans uh, to treat pulmonary fibrosis. Another disease that is of interest for us is renal fibrosis. Uh, this is a very prevalent disease and is also very similar to pulmonary fibrosis. It's characterized by uh, an excessive growth of the fibroblast and uh, by a lack of the ability of the kidney to, to regenerate when there is damage to the kidney. And uh, very recently in my group, we have also try to see whether short telomeres could be at the origin of this disease. And we have just uh, published a paper. And if you are interested in the detail, you can check it. We just published in Nature Aging. It's a new journal from Nature. Uh, we have shown that also short telomeres uh, can synergize to damage to the kidney. Like uh, in our case, we use uh, folic acid. But we have also used mouse models in which we induce telomere dysfunction. Uh, directly by removing uh, telomere protective proteins. And we see that this also leads to renal fibrosis. And we have discovered also that uh, short telomeres can, can induce a cellular plasticity process, which is called epithelial to mesenchymal transition, which is common to aging diseases, but also cancer, uh, which would explain why short telomeres could be inducing also more cancer, because short telomeres can induce these changes in gene expression that that uh, aid in the change of identity of epithelial cells to a mesenchymal phenotype, which could be also at the origin of, uh, of fibrosis in different tissues, um, as well as cancer. So we think this is also telling that um, telomerase gene therapy could be uh, useful, not only for, for lung fibrosis, but maybe for other types of fibrosis, like, uh, for instance, kidney fibrosis. And actually, in this paper, we show in vitro that if we isolate epithelial cells with short telomeres and we activate telomerase, we are able to also correct short telomeres in, in kidney epithelial cells. So this could be also a potential therapy. And um, I will end talking a little bit about COVID-19, uh, which as you well know, is a disease produced by the SARS-CoV-2 virus. It's a new uh, coronavirus. We were very curious to understand why older individuals are much more uh, likely to develop a severe COVID disease. Uh, and we think that this is probably because some of the molecular mechanisms of, of aging may be synergizing with the viral uh, infection. And uh, we published a work in which we measure telomeres in patients, uh, COVID-19 patients from a field hospital in Madrid. This was the first wave of the, of the pandemic in, in Spain. And we saw that uh, there was a correlation between telomere length and severity. So the individuals that, that, that were at the shortest percentile of telomere length or, or the higher percentage of short telomeres were also more likely to develop uh, severe COVID disease. We find this very interesting that the SARS-CoV-2 virus uh, infects many different cell types. So it can infect uh, uh, lung cells, uh, for instance, 
and the lung cells that are uh, infected are the alveolar type 2 cells, which we know are very relevant for, for pulmonary fibrosis induced by short telomeres. So we have a hypothesis that the virus may be killing the alveolar type 2 cells and older individuals, for instance, because they have short telomeres, they are not able to regenerate as efficiently as young individuals. And this could explain, we think, the fact that the severity of this pathology is, is much higher in older individuals, which have short telomeres than in, in younger individuals. So we are developing mouse models to understand the consequences of the, of the COVID infection, particularly for the sequels of the disease, like pulmonary fibrosis, that as you know, is a sequel. Kidney fibrosis and many other pathologies, we think this may be related to short telomeres after the viral infection is, is, uh, is passed. There may be um, these sequels, which are diseases um, associated with aging, like the pulmonary fibrosis, etc. And we are trying to, to, to demonstrate this. So I will, I will finish here with a group of people that work at the CNIO uh, on telomeres and telomerase, and in particular, um, the, the telomer aging team which is half of the group, more or less. The other half is working in, in cancer and the funding for, for the group. So thank you very much for your, for your attention. Thank you so very much, Dr. Blasco. That was a marvelous lecture. Thanks thank for you. sharing your invaluable knowledge on telomeres in aging with us. This is always a truly enjoyable experience to hear directly from leading research in the field. And before this lecture, tons of TimePie subscribers have submitted their questions regarding telomeres to us. Here are the two most representative ones, and I wonder if you would mind giving some of your thoughts on these questions. Okay. The, first one, the first one is, are there any tissue or cell specificities you need to overcome when using the AAV-based telomerase therapy to lengthen the telomeres? Can we treat different cell types from different organs with this same approach? I think we do. You can always uh, use uh, cell-specific promoters. Uh, you, can, you can target specific cells by using the promoters that are expressed in these cell types. So this is a way to target the gene therapy to specific cell type. Um, so you could choose a specific cell type in the kidney or in the lung or in the heart or in in other tissues. So this can be done with gene therapy. Uh, that's very inspirational. And the second question is, do you think telomeres is a good target for treating skin aging? Yes, I think it could be a good target. Uh, uh, we have developed also mouse models for, for different, for instance, different uh, telomere, telomere protective proteins. So you, they are called sheltering. So you can you can remove one of these cell proteins and this induces aging. We have seen that when we, you remove them in the epithelial cells of the skin, for instance, you induce a premature aging. So this means that telomere dysfunction could be also the origin of, uh, of uh, skin aging. So I think, uh, yeah, in theory, um, um, telomerase uh, activation strategy for a skin, maybe you don't need a gene therapy, could be something uh, um, more um, um, like a cream or something like yeah. that. I mean, you, you maybe you could also uh, delay aging, yeah, in the skin. Uh, thank you again, Dr. Blasco, for joining the course and sharing stimulating insights on the role of telomeres in aging. And uh, thank you very much. Have you with us again in future? And uh, my best thank wishes you. for your exciting and significant researches. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.